Welcome to the introduction to the first practice exercise in Unit 3. We want to expand the example that was in the book on creating and displaying products. Originally in the book they just opened up a website and it displayed a product. Uh, in the last unit we talked about we created a button and when that button was clicked we, create, we displayed a, pro a set product. What we want to do here is a couple things. First we want to add um, some information to our form, so uh, labels and some text boxes so that we can enter the name, price, and image URL, so the image location or name. And then uh, when we click on the button, we'll create a product matching that. So we can enter things like my chair uh, and then a price and image URL. Uh, we'll uh, right now, I'm just going to grab uh, images from the internet. Of course, when you're doing a real uh, website, you shouldn't be using other people's images, you'd be using yours. But just for this exercise, I'm just going to grab from Flickr some relatively uh, open uh, images. Um, so I'm going to grab this medium size image here uh, of this chair. Grab that URL and just use that. And again, whatever I typed in is the name and the price shows up here in the image of the chair here. Um, so that's our first thing we want to do. Um, and to do that, you'll want to go into your code, uh, go to your default.aspx and add uh, in design mode, add some labels. Uh, let me stop. Add some uh, text box, I mean labels and text boxes. Uh, you should name the text boxes appropriately. I'm using things like txt image and txt name so that you can refer to them in code. And then when you do your button, you want to make sure when you create your product, you're using things like txt name dot text. Uh, or txt image dot text to display to, to grab the information from the text boxes and put that into the product directly. For some things like um, <clears throat> the price, we want it needs to be a decimal, and it, the text boxes are strings by default. So what I have to do is make sure I stick like we did in the other earlier examples, uh, last unit. We have to stick a convert to decimal in here to convert this text string to a decimal. And then uh, I'm going to leave this response right and just call the get HTML method for that. That's the first thing we want to do. The second thing is we're going to talk a little bit about inheritance, and that's creating objects based on other objects. So we're going to create a book uh, class that's based on this product class. To create a new class, you can just go to a website, add new item. And then down here is the class, and you can type in a class name. So if I were to want to create, uh, besides a book, maybe a movie class, I can do that. It says uh, you're wanting to add this to your general folder, a code like uh, C sharp file should be in the app code folder. Do you want to put it there? And you want to say yes. So it'll put your file there, and it'll start off with a public class movie, and public movie, a basic constructor for you. And what we want to do is base this class on another class. So we would type in colon product here so that it inherits uh, the information from the product class. You want to do this not for movies but for books. Um, so again, we want to create this class uh, basic on the product class. Uh, we want to add two new attributes, an author, which is a string, and a number of pages, which is an integer. Then we want to do a couple things. We want to update uh, the constructors for this class. Uh, for products, we only uh, allow three parameters, the name, the price, and the image. We're going to add to these constructors the author and the pages. Uh, here. Now, one thing that's a little different with constructors uh, here is that um, we need to call then the constructor of the base class, the inherited class. Uh, so the product class. So we do that right in line. So we declare the our constructor and then we just put a colon 
and then we put in the declaration for the base class and this will automatically pass this information on to the base class and then then in the class the constructor itself we want to do our own um, initialization so we want to initialize pages and authors uh, which are passed in here and I just did two constructors uh, you could get by actually with just one uh, but I also mirrored the constructor they did without an image here and did the same thing the other thing we want to do is to override the get HTML class if you remember in the product database eh, the product class uh, there was a get HTML f uh, f function or method and that uh, just formatted the name, price, and image in HTML and passed that HTML back uh, as a text, as a string. We want to do the same thing here for books. We want to override that get HTML. Uh, again, we want much of the same code, the name here, but we also want to include the author. So say something like written by and then print out the author. Uh, we want to leave the price. We want to include the pages here and then leave the image. So we just want to add the, the fields, the author and the pages field to our printout or our HTML format in the get HTML method. So once you have that created, I uh, want you to go back to your web page and in design mode, um, add a couple more fields, author and number of pages, and add another button to create and display books. And this button should be very similar to so here's the book button and here's the product button above uh, so I named this button button book BTN book um, and rather than creating a product this one should create a book and we should say new book and then call a constructor with all the different uh, values here uh, something to remember is that in convert you you don't have a convert dot int it's for some reason convert dot int 32 that will actually convert it to an int uh, type. Um, so we're we're doing the, basically the same thing, but now we're doing it with books and uh, and then get HTML will then automatically call the get HTML of the book, not of the product, uh, because we overrode that function. So we want to set that up so that when you run this. Um, I'm going to delete this. I'm just trying out this little movie uh, example. I'm just going to delete that file. I'm just trying to show you how to create uh, classes. Okay, let's try this again. So again, we should be able to enter information for a product and grab a, image, a URL out there for an image and display that. Uh, similarly, we should be able to do the same thing for a book. So I'm going to type in the name of our book, meaning SP, uh, make up a price. I'm going to grab the image from some location just to try it out. Put in the author of our text. Uh, which is Matthew McDonald and number of pages and all the pages are there, so I'm just going to put a thousand and then do display book. So now hopefully it'll say that the title of the book written by or you know display the author information, the cost and also the number of pages and then still display the image in this case the image of the book. So that's what I basically want you to do for um, this first practice exercise, practice programming exercise.